Hey guys, it is Carl Brown from GuitarLessons365.com. Got a nice acoustic one for you today. We're going to do Two Steps Behind by Def Leppard. Um, so this one's in standard tuning, um, and it's like the intro here that I'm getting ready to show you has three different guitar parts going on at once. So if you have um, a couple other guitar players to play with, you can make that happen. Um, or you can just kind of decide which ones to do and which ones you think would uh, sound the best. So let's just start here with this intro. Um, so if we just play here, um, the, the basic chords that are going underneath it, it sounds like this. So what is going on there? We start with an A major chord. I hope you guys know your basic open chords because that's what most of the song is. If you don't, check out guitarlessons365.com in the beginner section. You'll, you'll see them all there for you. So we have an A major here. And then he goes to a D chord. But in this intro, it doesn't already really completely make it at the high E string too much. You want to keep it kind of just kind of stopping at the B string there. So we have this. Then you're going to do the same thing with a G chord. Kind of, don't really need to make it all the way to the top. Kind of make it a little bit lower sounding, a little deeper sounding, and then back to that D. So it's just A, D, G, D. Now, we have uh, the high guitar part that goes with that. I'll do that last because that's when you hear the most. But also in there, we have this. Now, Phil Collins is the one that's playing that. So he's holding this high E, the A, uh, A note here at the fifth fret on the high E string. And he's... He's actually gonna he's gonna pick the second fret there on the B string with that high note there and slide up to the third fret. Just playing the top two strings there. And then he has a hammer from three to five. So then you're gonna make it to just the uh, uh, fifth fret there on the B and the high E to get us. We have this. So that goes on over. All right, so now the third part is played by Vivian Campbell, and it sounds like this. All right, so he's using a kind of a series of sixths in there. So we're going to start here with just kind of sliding or or you might want to hammer on whatever between six and seven on the G and kind of picking that seven a few times then slide up to nine on the G and then you kind of just pick across to the high E string there just kind of pick it across those two notes on the high E and the G and then Kind of slide back into that seven and then grab into seven on the high E as well. Picking across those. And then he goes the first time through, he goes, he goes, slides it down to the second fret there on the G and can place the open B and the open high E with it. Kind of strum across. And then you kind of start over again. Except this next ending. He slides up to the 11th fret on the G, and then the 10th fret on the high E string. All right, so all together. So I put all three of those together, and you have the intro, which also happens uh, a little later in the song as well. 
All right, now we get to the actual verse. It sounds like this. Now, I, I will preface this by saying a lot of times live, they don't play the voicings exactly the same, uh, especially Joe Elliott when he's playing his part. He'll, he'll keep it with the more simple chord movements. Um, but um, these constantly going down to the suspended second chords, especially on the D chord here, uh, they might skip, but it, it, that's what they're doing on the recording, so that's how we're going to learn it here. So on this first chord, the A chord... You'll see them do that a lot. So it's just a regular A major chord. Then just gonna lift up the uh, finger on the B string and have an open B, and it makes it an A suspended second chord. Then go to a D major chord, and you basically do the same thing. You play the D, and then lift up the note on the high E string to make it a D suspended second. So we have this. And then you're going to take it to a G chord. Don't have to do anything fancy with that one. Then back to the D, where you hit it once and then go to the D sus2. So we have this so far. All right, so just A, D, G, D by going and doing the sus2 on the A's and the D's. Repeat that again. Now, when you go through it the third and fourth time, instead of going to a G chord, you go to an E major chord. Everything else is the same. All right, so now the strumming pattern, if, for those of you who like to kind of know an exact strumming pattern to do with everything, it's really just an eighth note feel. So you're just going down, up, down, up. As long as you do not stop this motion, you're gonna be. See, even when I'm not hitting the strings, I've still got that motion going. That gives me my momentum, it gives me my rhythm. So I'm just one and two and three and four and one, two. So it's, I'm, I'm one of those guys that is just like, I want you to start feeling it like they actually feel it. They are not counting one, two and, three and, one and, and, and counting their downs and upstrokes. They just feel it because they keep that momentum going in their arm. So that is how you want to do it. You want to first get used to just, just on one chord, being able to miss the strings. And even when you miss the strings, you're still doing the movement. And then you just literally listen to the rhythm that they're strumming like it's somebody just clapping it. So dun, dun, da dun, dun. If you can clap that back to somebody, you should be able to also strum it. So I want you to kind of work on that instead of always just focusing on trying to feel like an exact thing, because they don't keep it consistent themselves anyway, They're just because they're going by feel. All right, so that is the intro after that little sermon. Anyway, so now let's go to the pre-chorus, which sounds like this. So that just starts with an F sharp minor chord. So that's a full bar at the second fret and the fourth fret on the A and the D. Then you go to a D major chord. This time's a full D major without any kind of, uh, kind of taking it down to a sus2 chord. Into a G. And then you're going to end it with an E major chord hit three times. So all together again.
I don't, I don't know the words. Anyway, so let's get to the chorus, which is similar to the, um, the verse, but just, you know, not similar. <laughs> so let's play it. So that is the, the second half of the verse, is uh, that part that we, we ended the verse with. You play that basically. If you remember the second half of the verse, we went to an E instead of a G. Well, it's that progression, played the same way with the A sus twos and the D sus twos, um, twice. So you play through that twice, and then you get back to an A to the suspended, to the D, to the sus sus suspended, and then it's the same thing going down to the E, but then they take it real quick to a G. Just kind of strung that for a while, there's kind of a descending bass line going there, and then end it with a straight D major chord. All right, so I'll play that one more time for you so you don't get confused. Now there's a little turnaround getting back to the verse. The turnaround to get back to the verse is the uh, first half of the verse played without any vocals. And then they just go to the full verse. So we go through the same verse, same pre-chorus, and same chorus. Now um, coming after the second chorus, we go back into what sounds like the intro. Um, the only slight variation that he is on the high part, instead of Doing that the last time is a. It just goes down to the second fret version again. Um, it doesn't end with the high part. It just ends like it did the first time through. All right, so which is. All right, then we get to Phil Collins solo, which is a really cool solo. But real quick, underneath the solo is the verse. That's what's going on with the rhythm guitar parts. So let me play uh, a Phil Collins solo for you. plays this slightly differently on the original recording than he does live now. This, especially this, he likes, he, he likes to take it, he'll kind of take it and do something high, higher with it. Uh, but that is not on the original recording, so we're going to do the original recording for this one, make it a little bit easier. So we have, there's a little build up coming into the solo on this, because he's going, He's coming out of that, that part. Just playing that fifth fret there. And then... So that's the first phrase. It's sliding three to five on the, on the B string while you have the open high E string ringing with it. And then take it back down to the third fret there but still keep that high E string ringing. So you're strumming both of those strings together, then over to the G string. So, kind of hammer two to four on the G. Pick that four a few times, and then two, four, slide into six.
All right, now we have a series of double stops uh, up top. Sounds like this. So that's sliding first, starting from 12 on the B string, slide up to 14 on the B. And then you can kind of just pick across, kind of strum across, actually, the 14th fret there on the B and the 12th fret on the high E together. So you take that chord, then move it down two frets. So it's 10 on the high E, 12 on the B, and then down at nine to nine on the high E and 10 on the B. So it's so let's try that a little bit there, and then so the the very ending of it there is you're still holding that nine and the ten. Play those together, then hammer on to the tenth fret. Show them that a couple times with the tenth, and then now move down the double stop, seventh fret on the high E, eighth on the B, and then seven on the high E, seven on the B. So we have this. So all together. All right, now we have kind of a difficult bend. All right, so that's gonna be the 12th fret on the high E string with the 12th fret on the B. So you play those together but you're bending up the B string a whole step on the uh, at the 12th fret there. The picket release, and then the 10th fret on the B string, still with that 12th fret on the high E string. Now we have this kind of um, low part. So you hit the low E, then cut it a couple times, And this slides into the eight, the, uh, the A notes, the uh, fifth fret there on the low E string. Actually, uh, might want to just slide into the uh, fourth fret there. And then hit the second fret a couple times on the A string over to the second fret on the D. Then you go to a D power chord, which is the open D string, second fret on the G, and third fret on the, the B. Now this, this little riff, it's really low in the mix, so it's kind of hard to hear. The thing is, is you just kind of want to stick with the feel of it. All right. Now we get to the part that he does a different live now, but on the original recording, it sounds like this. So that's that's sliding in the sixth fret on the G over to the fifth fret on the B. Kind of strum between the, go pick across between those two. Take it down two frets. And then you just keep the note on the third fret there on the B and take that bottom note down to the second fret on the G. And then we have the uh, last phrase of the solo. So that's sliding three to five. Then hit the open high E string. Then slide five to seven on the B. And the hope and high E again. So you're sliding up three to five on the B, open high E, slide five seven on the open on the B, open high E, then slide seven to ten on the B. Then the open high E again, and then he has this quick little lick. That's a pull off. 10 to 7 on the B string, over to 9 on the G, back to the 7 on the B, back to 10, so with this, up to 12, back to 10, 12, 14.
time slow. So from this uh, kind of lower part from the start slides. All right, so then we go back through the pre-chorus and the chorus again. And then at the end, we kind of have um, just a, a series of uh, chords that sound like this. All right, so that's just a slightly different ending. He, they actually start with the A sus2 chord, so it's that A major without anything with the open B string there. To a regular D, you don't get, take it down to a sus2 or anything, and then to a G, and back to the D. So do that progression twice. And then just end the song with that A sus2 chord. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you have a second guitar player or maybe even a third guitar player uh, to hang out with and uh, jam this out on to make it sound just like the recording. All right, I'll see you guys again soon for guitarlessons365.com.